Hello everyone, today we're gonna to talk about leadership and how you can become a great business leader. Hello everyone, today's episode is about leadership and how you can become a great business leader through some examples and through our viewer question. But first, as always, I want to start with a quote. The quote is, if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. Written by that revolutionary rabbi um, in first century um, Palestine, changed the globe as we know it, Jesus Christ. So if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall in the ditch. So you really need to find leadership, become a leader, you really need to open your eyes to who you really are and the possibilities around you. So I'll go straight into the question. Hi Hadron, I love your videos and watch them daily. You've helped me a lot and I've noticed myself and some of the things I do and what I can improve. You're more than welcome. Currently I've got a promotion as a floor manager at a small computer business. I'm incredibly intimidated um, and would like to know how to lead the staff. I believe by watching some of your videos I've gained the skills that I need to become more confident but I don't know how to become a leader and I'm incredibly anxious about this new role. First of all, congratulations on getting the new role. It's not unusual to be anxious about getting a new role because you've never done it before. You will stuff up a little bit, like everyone does in a new role, but ultimately, if you stick to it, you'll be amazing. And you sound like you're really working on yourself, which is a true characteristic of a leader. So I'm excited to take this question because leadership is really um, exemplified by a lot of studies in the um, concept of technical versus leadership. So I want to talk to you about how leaders evolve. Generally, leaders with any organisation, and you're in a computer, uh, you're a computer floor, a computer sales room. So I'm assuming that at some level you've either shown a technical competency in sales, and they've said, "Well, you're great, therefore you, you can be a leader because you're great at sales. Therefore, other people will become great at sales." Now that's not going to happen. That's not true. If you go in with that belief, and if you've been told that belief, being a great salesperson doesn't make other salespeople better. It just makes you a great salesperson because it's technical. And passing on technical skills, you can't put your head on someone else's shoulders, is difficult. Now, what generally happens with people when they first become leaders is they're technically competent, therefore they do everything themselves. Because they believe, well, I'm the best at it, I've got to leave from example and do everything myself. It's a great technique to follow, because it's, you know, you're out there on the floor, you're getting everything done, and you're really setting yourself up as a, as a leader because people are you know, seeing your actions. But that will only go so far. Because your technical skills, well, let's say that your sales skills allow you to sell 80 computers, you can't sell enough computers for the business to run um, appropriately. I'm sure you've got five or six staff. You can't sell all the computers for everyone. So at some stage, you've got to step back from your technical expertise that you're giving to the business and start delivering leadership expertise. Now, what that means is stepping back, allowing other people on the team to start taking responsibilities and growing those people. Leadership is about growing people and getting them better, not you better. You're the leader. Yes, it's great that you're watching these videos and getting better, but your job is to make these guys better. You might play some of these videos at your morning meetings, you might you get them to subscribe to the channel, but really what you wanna do is work on plans to create better leaders or better individuals within your company, which is a great place to be. An example of this was uh, an incredible guy, I think I've got, his rookie card here. Now, his name was Michael Jordan. Still is Michael Jordan. And um, he is regarded by many as the greatest basketball of all time. Now, this bloke came into the NBA and you know he hit the ground running. He was almost a scoring champ in his first year. Um, he was rebounding, he was defending, he was doing everything, he was dunking, he was winning dunk comps. He was doing everything on the court. So basically what he was, he was technically proficient. He was like you, he was good at his job, and he was the best at his job, and we all know the highlights of Michael Jordan. Now, from 1985 to 1989, although he was considered a leader on his team, he worked very hard on his technical competency. Now, his technical competency was his shooting, his athleticism, his rebounding, his assists, and he improved his shooting, where he became an excellent jump shooter, shooting over 50%, and um, creating the devastating um, turnaround jump shot that he, um, that he eventually used for the next 15 years. And um, he also worked on his defense and became Defensive Player of the Year, which he wasn't known for originally. He was a spectacular player who worked on his defense. Now, even though he was the best player in the league from 1985 to 1989, he never won anything. Jordan won nothing in his first five years. He was a failure. 
Every time he went to the playoffs, the Celtics or the Pistons would knock him out because it didn't matter how good he was, he had a team around him that he hadn't improved. And remember what I said about you need to improve your team to get anywhere? Jordan found this. The players weren't stepping up. He scored 63 against the Celtics in the Boston Garden against the great Larry Bird, and he lost that game. So you can sort of see how your technical competency can only get you so far. Now, there was a slight change in um, when Jordan had a loss to the Pistons for the, in the Eastern Conference Finals for, the, I think, the second or third time. He was angry. And he knew that his technical competency was at its highest. He couldn't get much better as a basketball player. So what could he do? This is where he became a true leader. In 1990, when he made his first finals against the Lakers, he was scoring less than he had scored in many previous seasons. Many of his stats were down. So he actually stepped back and his technical competency decreased so he can invest more time in Scottie Pippen, Horace Grant, pass the ball to um, other players to get them involved in the game. So in crunch time, it wasn't just all about Jordan. Now something revolutionary happened when Jordan's stats actually decreased a little bit. His, de his decrease in competency led to an increase in leadership and something crazy happened. He didn't become, become a better basketball player, but he started winning. And against the Lakers, he won his first championship and went on to win six championships, two three-peats, which unheard of in modern sports. How did he do this? He became a leader by growing his team, not growing his own skills. Now, that's obviously an amazing example of a turnaround. If you want to be a true leader, you really need to focus on growing the people around you as Michael Jordan found and now is known as the greatest player of all time. But I can guarantee you, if he didn't win those championships, people wouldn't consider him the best player. They would say he's very gifted, highly technically competent, but not a winner. And you want to be a winner and lead. So thank you for the great question. It's time to spin the karma wheel and share this video. You never know who looks, who's looking to be the next leader who's struggling with leadership that might like to watch this video. If you'd like a one-on-one -on -one session about leadership, we can organize a Skype call. Other than that, thank you and goodbye.